Welcome to Pro Kitchen Video Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to spend about an hour and a half, and we're going to build a pretty moderate design. And while doing so, we're going to look through all of the basic functions and features of Pro Kitchen. And when we get to the end, you'll be ready to go off on your own and start designing kitchens in Pro Kitchen. So let's get started. The very first thing we need to do is we need to create a new design. We're just going to click on our new design button. You can also access this from the file menu. And the first thing we want to do in here is we want to click on our little file folder and we want to enter a design name. We're going to name this one 1 1.5 hour tutorial. And we're going to hit save. And now we can come through here and we can set up our customer and our dealer and our designer. <clears throat> I don't have any customers set up, so we're just going to be real quick here. We're just going to set up the basics. I'm going to click on new and account number. I don't have one yet. Company. It's a customer walked in the door. I don't know what their company is. I know their name. Name's Mike. Mike Smith. Email ms at yahoo.com. Phone. We're in Hollywood today, so we'll use the Hollywood phone. Address. We can click down here for the address. Opens up a new window. It was a little bit off my screen. And it's a new address, so they are. Colorado looks like a good place for that. And so I'm going to select that as their address and select. So here we come up with the address. I'm going to hit OK. And I want to select Mike. Here's Mike's information. A dealer. Once you've set this up, your information stays. Designer. If you've got a specific di designer who's using, you can put them in there. If you need supervisor information, you can put that in there. Our construction tab. Um, you can go ahead and set all of your defaults for the design. Now these are design specific. You can also set these as a program default. So say you want your walls four and a half. In default settings, you can set that. So every time you come in here, your walls are four and a half. Um, your zone width, I recommend you leave that the way it is now. Uh, but everything else, you can feel free to change. Um, if you change your wall height, if you've got your design already going and you already put all your walls in at eight foot tall and then you realize you need nine foot or ten foot walls it happens you don't have to right click on each wall and modify it from there you can simply come back to here change your height set apply to existing walls and all the walls will adjust to the new height if you change your height and do not apply to existing walls any new walls you add will be in the new height all your existing walls will remain. Wall items alignment, we've got top alignment and bottom alignment. Top alignment default is 84 inches. That will set the top of all of your wall cabinets at 84 inches, regardless of the height of that wall cabinet. So if you have your top alignment set at 84 and you place a 48 inch cabinet, it's going to seriously interfere with your countertop clearances because it's gonna drop from the 84 inches down. Then you can use bottom alignment as well. That'll set the bottom of all of your wall cabinets at a specific height. If your shipment comes on a pallet and you need to put that weight in there to calculate the uh, weight for shipping, you can do that. Dimension nomenclature orientation. Set a default, but you can do it clockwise, counterclockwise, 90 degree clockwise, all sorts of fun stuff on there just however you like to see it. Auto offset hoods from cabinets. This will automatically set your hood an inch away from your cabinet. You can set that to zero or whatever your preferences are. Moldings, you can set moldings over here. And this works with our moldings tab. So we are going to use some light rail in the design we're doing and our design will be a show place. And our light rail, we're just gonna do a cove. Our top molding also in show place. And we're going to do the eight foot crown 
And our toe kick also in show place. Imagine that. And it's going to be trim board. Now, if we want to do molding lighting, we'll put some on real quick. Light rail molding. We've got some options here. I'm going to use the little xenons. We can turn them up and down. We can do top molding. That's molding to sit on top of your cabinet, shine it up. Toe kick molding, which is toe, you know, lighting in your toe kick. None of that we need for this design. We're going to hit OK. Countertop, standard countertop defaults. They're good the way they are for this design. And our 3D tab. I do want to mix these up a little bit. So we're going to change our countertop color. We're going to go to a granite. And we're going to do something down in this color. And our wall coverings. I'm just going to go into my blue palette. And I'm going to choose a nice soft gray right there, something like that. And OK. And so there, I want to change my floor. Hardwood, we're just going to grab, let me see, I don't want that guy. Do that one right there. So there's our 3D colors. And then finally our units. We are ready to build our design. But before we really get excited on building our walls, we're going to play with our walls a little bit just to see how they work. We want to build our walls in a clockwise type motion. Always seems to work best. It gets your placement zone on the inside instead of the outside of your walls. Which either way works, because you can switch them back and forth. But it's just nice to have them right to start with. So once you have set your design settings up, you're ready to start building. You don't have to come over here and click on our sketch button to get the uh, walls going. It's already attached, ready to go. It's just waiting for us to click on the layout, start moving our mouse. So once I start building my walls, you'll notice that it goes the direction I move with my mouse. And it snaps over at the 45, 90 degree points, which makes it nice and easy. And you'll also notice in my left panel over here that as I move my mouse, there's a little length box that's highlighted in blue that changes with the live dimension. It's highlighted in blue indicating that it's a typable field. So if I hit backspace on my keyboard, I can enter any dimension I want. Once I enter that dimension, I hit enter on my keyboard. It gives me a 90 degree corner and a four inch wall, and we're ready to go again. Now, again, a 90 degree corner, I can take over with my mouse at any time, but going back without the mouse, we're gonna add another wall here. I want it 48 inches, but this time I don't want it at my 90 degree corner. I wanted it at a 135. So I'm just simply going to type that in. And then again. And of course, we can come in here and we can actually change our wall height as well. And when we're all done with our walls, we can either hit escape or zero and enter, whatever's easiest. And our walls are ready to go. Now, these are not the walls I want to use. Not even close. But we have a few more walls here. We've got U-shaped rooms that we can play with. And you can simply come in here. You've got A and B dimensions. And we can adjust those up and down as you want. And there's our wall. Then we've got L-shapes and rectangular room shapes, and they all work the same way. And then, of course, we have construction line, which works exactly as your sketch button, only does it in a little dotted line that doesn't show up on your layout or anything. It's simply there to design to, and it gives you a placement zone to work with. But we are ready to build our walls, and this is a pretty good size design, so I'm going to scroll out on my grid just a little bit. And I'm scrolling in and out by using my wheel on my mouse. Pull it back to you and you scroll out, push it away from you and you scroll in. 
So we need something about that size. I'm going to click on my sketch button. And I'm not going to start down here in my corner. I'm actually going to start kind of in the middle off to one side because my first wall goes horizontal to the left. So I'm going to click on it and start dragging it horizontal. Now it's a good thing that I don't have to read the measurements that are being created with my wall because they are so tiny there's no way I can see those. So I'm going to revert to my info panel and this wall needs to be 84 inches long. So I'm going to hit backspace on my keyboard. I'm going to hit 84 and enter and there's my wall 84 inches. My next wall is 93 inches. 93 enter. My other wall here is 402 inches. <clears throat> Not so long I don't even know. My next wall is 138 inches and then I've got a 210 inch long wall over here and now my next wall is 85 inches but it's 270 degrees from where I'm pointed. So I'm going to enter 85, tab down here, 270 degrees, and enter. My next wall is 104, and my last wall here is 148. And that is also zero and enter or escape, and our walls are all built. And once we set our last wall, it automatically resizes and recenters in your design. So now I've got all my walls in. Now it's time to build some windows. So I'm going to come over here and click on our Windows tab. And I want a casement window. I want a big casement window. I want a 72 inch casement window without grids in off white. And I'm going to place that guy right over there. And now I need a few more. I need another 72 in off white. I'm going to place him right here. And now I need a 48 inch without grids in off white. And I'm going to place him right about there. And cancel. That is all of my windows that I'm going to set that way. I'm going to go to my attributes on my first window. And on my first window, I want that to be a little bit bigger than 32. I want this to actually be 66 inches. And I want to add sunlight to that window. So a light source has been added. And I want to split this window into two sections. Now we're going to go to the construction tab. And I want to keep it a casement. But you can change it to any of these other options if you get in there and decide, oops, it's wrong, I need to change it. We can also adjust the installation. We can make it just have drywall returns or it can have jam and casing. In this case, I want jam and casing. And we can reverse the sash. And I actually don't want to reverse that sash. I want to click on this one and reverse that sash. So, so there we have them both opening the opposite direction. If you click up here, you can zoom in and out by using your wheel. And that's the outside. And here comes the inside. And now you see our latches are together in the center. So we're opening off of the center. And then we can click on our profile tab over here and select the profile of our sash. And that comes up just like this. We're just going to leave it a nice square profile. We're going to hit OK. And now we're going to go click on special shapes. And so we can adjust these special shapes if necessary. We don't have these special shapes. So we got a round glass in that one. Do a half arch in that one. <laughs> or elliptical. We want them just to be regular, but they're kind of fun. You can screw around with them. Um, grill patterns, we chose no grill, but had we chosen a grill, we could uh, adjust our grill pattern, and we've got grill profile. And we could choose any of those grill, grill profiles. Window glazing, if you're using the light, we want to leave it not glazed, and we want the grill installation to be on the inside only. But you can put smoke glass on there if you want. Uh, single glazing, now, now these show up. So smoked or white or matte or clear. We're going to leave it as not glazed. You can choose where you want your grill installed. We're going to leave it on inside only. Window interior. 
We can install stool and apron. You can see it installed right there with the stool and apron. We don't want that on this design. You can change these. Again, there's a bunch of different ones inside there that you can change. So you can click on those and adjust those. We can even take the casing off if you don't want it casing at all. This works best if you're doing a drywall return. And you can choose our casing width. And then you can change the color. We don't want to change the color because we selected the color we wanted to start with. But you notice the colors are a little more limited over in our window selector area. And they're a lot more optional over here. Window exterior, same thing. We can install brick mold. We have our brick mold options and we can choose a color. It does not have to be the same color as the interior of the window. We can choose what color hardware we want on there. We are going to install some blinds. We've got some blind options. You can do whatever size you want. We're going to lift those about halfway, give or take. And we're going to close them about a quarter of the way. And you can adjust them all together. You can just adjust one window at a time. And you can also choose the, if you want a different color on your blinds. And that is all we're doing for that window. So I'm going to hit OK. And it resized out here. Now I need to drag it. And I happen to know that I want it six inches from my wall on the left. So I'm just simply going to enter six on my keyboard and enter. And it pops it right in there for me. I need this same window on the other wall, so I'm gonna hit copy. I'm gonna bring it down here and drop it. And I want my out to be 134 and enter. And there we have our windows placed. Now we actually have quite a few windows in this design, so we're gonna go up and grab this one and go to its attributes. And we wanna add the sunlight to this one as well. I want my window width to be a little bit bigger at 36. Height is a little tall at 48. I want to adjust that down to 42. And I want to give it a 2U. I want to come over to construction. I want to click on my other sash. I want to reverse that sash. My special shapes are fine. My grill patterns are good. My interior and exterior is good. My hardware is fine, but I do want to install a blind. So we'll put those blinds. I'm going to have them down about most of the way here. Going to leave them wide open. And we are good to go there. So I'm going to click OK. But I forgot to recenter that. And now I need to locate this window. So this window is located 222 inches from the left. So I want to. Go to my window and drag and 222. Now I could probably spend some time playing around and fiddling it and getting it just right. But I'm just going to backspace and hit 222 and enter on my keyboard. And that window is where I need it to be now. I'm going to go to this window and I want to go to the attributes for it as well. And we want this to be a little smaller window. We want it to be 30 inches wide. I want the sunlight added behind it as well. My construction is good on this one. My shapes are good. I do want a blind. So I'm going to install the blinds. I'm going to lift them about halfway, three quarters of the way. And I'm going to give them about a quarter close. And we'll hit OK. Now I need to locate that window a little bit better. So I'm going to scroll in here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to right click on this window and I am going to drag it. And I need it to be 66 inches from the right. So I'm going to type in 66 and enter. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to slide it right in next to it. I'm going to go back to my attributes of my copied window. I want to go to construction and I want to reverse the sash. And then I want to go down here to blinds and I want to drop it a ways. About three quarters. 
and I'm going to hit OK. Now, more windows. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to right click on this guy. I'm going to go to copy. I'm going to drop it randomly. I'm going to right click on it, select it, and choose center. And I'm going to click on the wall. And now that's centered on my wall. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to copy it as well. I'm going to put him on the wall. And I'm going to drag him right over till he snaps to the other one. And again, the same thing with this one. Copy, put it on the wall, drag it over. I want to right click on this one and go to the attributes and the construction. And I want to unreverse my sash and OK. And when we take a 3D of that, you'll see why. So I have my sashes all kind of going consistently. Now I'm going to do a zoom to fit. And I have one more item to put in out here. I have my patio door. So I'm going to click on doors. And we want exterior doors and patio doors. And our very first one is just fine, a double in white. I'm going to place it. And I'm just going to drop it in out here randomly again. I'm going to scroll up so you can all see me right click on it and choose attributes. And I want this guy to be 72 inches wide. And we're just going to hit OK. Scroll back down so I can see. I'm going to right click on this thing. Right click on this thing. I am going to choose center. We're going to click on the wall and it's going to center it right on that wall for us. Again, we're going to zoom to fit. We're back into our design. And finally, we have all of our windows and doors placed. I do need to make a modification on this one, but I will do it in a little bit. Because right now, we are ready to place cabinets. But before we place cabinets, I do have one more set of walls to place in here. So we should probably do that now. Otherwise, my design is going to be clustered and it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing. So I've got an island set out here. And so I need to set the back wall for my island. It's going to be a construction line. So I'm going to come over to my wall. And I can come up here and I can grab a construction line. I can build it out here and hope I have it in the right place. And I can tell you I don't. But by doing a little math and taking a couple measurements when you're out on your design job, you can certainly figure out where it goes in relation to the rest of the room. So I'm going to right click on my wall. And I'm going to go to wall number four. And I'm going to go to add construction line, which you can't see because it's halfway off my screen. Wall number four, add construction line. And now you'll see as I move my mouse up and down, there's a little half of a square right there. I happen to know that on my left side of my wall, which is the top half of my wall, I want 87 inches. Because that's what I measured when I was out on the job. 87 inches. I want that wall to be 102 inches long. So I'm going to start moving it out there and type in 102 and enter. And there's part of my island wall. I want to right click on it again. I want to use construction wall number nine. And I want to continue construction line. Now you notice I'm going up here to 90. I don't want to go up. I want to go straight out. So I'm just going to move it straight out. And I'm going to set 147 inches. Enter. Zero. Enter. There is my island wall. I want to right click on this guy and go to construction line 10 and attributes. I want an inside and an outside zone. And I want my wall thickness to be zero inches. And remember, when you click on and you change a, a thickness, a, a, a dimension here, you have to either hit tab or click into another field for it to set. If it's grayed out, it's not set. And when you hit OK, it's going to revert back to its previous quality. So I'm going to hit OK. And there is my line with no thickness. Here's my other wall. And I can click on it and delete because I do not need it in there anymore. Now I have all of my walls. Now I can zoom to fit. Now we've got our walls created. We've got our doors and windows placed. And we're ready to start placing cabinets. Almost. First, before we start placing cabinets, we really need to go set our global specifications. The reason we need to set our global specifications is simply because 
many catalogs have items that are door style or finish specific. And in the catalog, they're all put together until you select your global specifications. So if you don't set your global specifications first, you might have a little surprise when you've gone through all the hard work of designing and you go to set your global specs and it tells you that such and such cabinets are not available in the store style. So set your global specifications first. One other thing that I didn't touch on as I was doing that because I was talking about global specs, but you'll notice that when you select the door style, it pulls up over here. You'll notice this little red PDF button here. If you click on that little red PDF button, it will pull open the spec book for you. It makes it really easy to find what you're looking for. So those are our global specs. Now we're ready to start building our kitchen. Let's start by placing some cabinets. And we are going to start with tall cabinets. I always start with my base corner cabinet. I always start with my base corner cabinet. And then you get a design like this one that doesn't have a base corner cabinet. So we are going to do utility with three drawers, 90 inches tall. I need a 24 left and a 24 right. So I'm going to grab my 24 left. I'm going to bring it out here. And I'm going to drop it on my zone. I'm going to drag it down. And you'll notice as I get close, it snaps in there. Well, I don't want it to snap in there. I actually want it to be an inch and a half. Now I can leave it snap and I can just type an inch and a half, which is what I would normally do, but I'm showing a tutorial. So we're going to show you the other way to do it. We can unsnap. Now as I drag my wall, I can ease it right into there. And if I had patience, and less gray hair, I could get it to set right at an inch and a half. But I have neither of one of those, so I'm going to hit 1.5 on my keyboard and enter, and it's automatically going to pull it inch and a half from the wall. I'm going to turn my snap back on because I want to use it for the rest of my design. And I am going to grab the other wall 2490 righty and drop it right into place. And now I have another utility cabinet that I need, a utility base, 90 inches high, 30 inches wide, and I'm gonna run this one wild out here in the end. I am going to right click on it and go to attributes. And in my attributes, I wanna to go to modifications, sizing modifications, depth sizing, reduce depth tall, you click the arrow over button to select it and down to 15 inches and OK. Now I also want to put an end panel on this and I want to do a decorative panel, decorative panel. And I'm 15 inches deep, so I need a 15 decorative panel and I want that to be on the right hand side. So I'm going to choose that and hit arrow, arrow over, zoom in a little bit on this guy, roll him around, and here you can see the nice decorative panel that's been added. And OK, so there we are. In and out, select that back to the wall, and zoom to fit again. So now we're ready to place a few more cabinets. I'm done with my utility cabinets, so I can turn those all the way off. And we're going to go to base cabinets and we'll start off with some standard base cabinets. I need a base 30 here and another base 30 here. And I can slide this guy over here. Now you see sometimes you sometimes snap gives you a little bit of grief. So I'm going to turn snap off, slide it over. Now I can turn snap back on. While I'm down here, we should look at the rest of these buttons. So our grid button simply turns our grid on and off. I kind of like having my grid out there. Kind of helps me design. Our zone, we can turn our zones on and off. And when we click this, I mean, it, it doesn't just take them off the screen. It completely turns them off. So I can place a standard base cabinet over here. That's going to place wrong. 
You can place any cabinet out there and it's going to place wrong. So you turn your zone back on. We've got display distance on mouse navigation. With this turned on, you'll notice that when there's a distance, well, I don't have a distance, so I guess we have to place a couple more cabinets so we can get a distance. Remember when I said we were done with tall cabinets? I lied. We got a couple more. So let's grab our other two tall cabinets and stick out here. We need an oven cabinet, an oven cabinet, a 90 inch tall oven cabinet, 30 inches wide. We're just going to drag it and drop it right over here. And it needs to be 78 inches from the corner. And you see I'm 77 now. So I'm just going to type 78 and enter. And you'll notice now that I put my mouse up here, I got a little dimension there. Let's put in another cabinet and we'll zoom in and check that out a little bit better. Refrigerator cabinet, 90 inches tall, 39 inches wide, and I want to stick that right over about there. And now we can zoom in a little bit. We're going to do zoom into region and back to my select mode. And now you see that when I'm in here, there's a measurement. There's a measurement going over to that wall, the measurement going over to that wall. If I turn this off, I got no measurement. I get so lost without measurements, I never know where I'm at. And then finally, we have collision button. Now, you notice when you slide a cabinet up to another one, it stops for a while until you can pop it all the way over the other side. That's collision. When we turn collision off, and I can smoothly scroll it right to that cabinet. I can even place it in there if I want. So if you design it with your collision off, be sure you have your snap on. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to get things lined up just right. So I'm going to turn my collision back on. I'm going to slide my cabinet away. And there's one more way to use collision detection. If you hold down the control button on your keyboard, this allows you to do it right off the bat, really quick and easy. And you don't have to come down here and click the button. If you're already in the function, if you're already moving your cabinet and you realize you need to you know, move it to the other side or if it's just not pulling up close enough and you need to use your collision detection, you can do it on the fly by holding down your control button. Get that a little closer. And then we have grid snap. And grid snap simply is going to snap you to the grid. There it snapped to the center. There's a corner. There's a corner. There's a center. So that makes it easy to sometimes lay out your islands and stuff if you're doing them without having a construction zone out there. So I'm going to turn grid snap off, regular snap back on, and the rest I'm going to leave on. And you can set them to your preferences. I'm going to hit zoom to fit so we go back out to a little bit easier and maybe in a little bit. When I move my, move my mouse wheel in or out, it'll zoom in or out. So if I push my mouse wheel away from me, we zoom in. If I pull my mouse wheel back towards me, we zoom out. So that makes it a little bit easier than trying to use these buttons and the zoom in all the time. It's nice to have your mouse functions. So now we are done with our talls. We need some more base cabinets. You'll notice when I open my base cabinets here, I didn't close my standard base folder when I closed my base, my overall base folder. So it opened up automatically for me, which is really nice. Uh, the only time all this stuff closes is it closes in here is once you close the design out. If you reopen the design, everything will be back to default, everything closed. Otherwise, when you're working away, if you just close bases, you go back into bases, it's still open. So for my base cabinets, I need I need a base 30. Might as well get that guy placed in here. Collision detected. There we go. Slide it over. Slide that guy over. There's my bank there. So I need another base 30. A lot of base 30s in this design. I need a drawer base 15. So scroll down here till we find drawer bases. Three drawer base, three drawer base, 15. And it'll snap right in there just like so. 
And I am done with my drawer bases, so I'm going to close it all the way up. Now I need a sink base, which was down here next to drawer bases. And a sink range base, sink range base, 36. Drop it right in place. You notice I've got it nice and centered under my window. Close those back out. And now I need a base 18. Man, we should hinge that guy righty. And it's going to go on the other side of the dishwasher. So I'm just going to give it a little extra room. And that is all of my base cabinets on my exterior walls. I've got some base cabinets on my island to place now. And we're going to start off with a base 24 right. Drop it out here. And I want that right at the end. And again, you can kind of fiddle with it and get it just right. If you can get it, stay on that zero, left click and drop it, or you can use your mouse, your manual navigation and enter zero in the tab. And there's my other base 24, need a base 36. You notice I just double clicked and it placed it out there. If you have your cabinet highlight red and you double click on your next cabinet, it will drop it right in place for you but only if it's highlighted red. And I need a 15 inch base cabinet. And here I can go to modifications. This is our tool tip. Haven't really talked about our tool tip yet. Gives me my cabinet dimensions, 15, 34 and a half, 12 inches deep, right off the bat. Tells me I need to give it a little bit of, of adjustment. I can offset it off the back wall or the side walls which makes it pretty nice because if you need to pull a cabinet three inches from the wall, you just put three in here. If uh, my, my corner cabinet that I placed down there that I pulled an inch and a half from the wall for the filler, I could have typed an inch and a half in here and it would have pulled it an inch and a half from the wall. I want to hit modifications from here and I can modify this cabinet before I place it. I need a sizing modification on it. Increase depth base. And I want to make that a 24. And OK. And OK. And it's already hooked. I know it's hooked to my mouse because my mouse is now across. Now our next cabinet in line is a standard base. Base 33. Let me drop it in place. And we can get back down here to these guys. And I need a wall base 36. Now this guy, I'm just going to drag it. I'm just going to drop him right out here, kind of off in the middle of nowhere. And I'm going to give him a rotate. And I'm just going to drop him here. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to go to my attributes. I want to go to modifications and size mods, depth height. I want to increase the depth of my base cabinet. And I want to make him 15 inches deep. And OK. Whoops. I wasn't quite done over there. It's a little ambitious. And then I want to add end panels to him. So decorative end panel, decorative end panel, 15 inches left and right. There we go. And I've got them left and right. And OK. Now I'm going to hit move. Scroll up just a little bit. And then once I have the crosshair, I'm just going to click out here. I'm going to make sure that I'm not on a zone. And now it's attached to my mouse and I can move them into place. And my snap makes it really easy to get them in the right spot. And there we have them set in there. Now I need a few more of these guys. If you remember, we placed a zone on the inside and the outside of that little wall. So I can just drag them and drop them right into place here. And right click on this guy. And attributes and modifications, end panel mods, decorative end. Whoops. Decorative end. And I need a 12. A 12 lefty and OK. Now let's do a zoom to fit. And we have all of our base cabinets in place. Now 
we can go set our wall cabinets. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to close out of my bases. I'm going to open my walls and standard walls and 30 inch high. And we're going to zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to start with a wall 30, 30, and I'm going to put one right here. Double click and pop one in right next to it. Scroll up a little bit, a wall 30, 30 here. A wall 42, 30 here. And a wall 39, 30 on the other side of my window. And it's just out there rough again. And that, my friends, is all of our wall cabinets. So, I've got some appliances that I can place now. So, let's go to our appliances tab. And I want to go to my dishwasher. And we'll grab this guy right here and place and drop it in. Drag him over. And I have a few more, but we're not quite ready for them. I'm just going to grab these guys and drag them into place. Now, it's not wanting to snap right for me. So, I'm going to go back to my drag and drag it over and just line it up with the end. There we go. And I need to up down that window. So we're going to take a look at elevations now. So I'm going to click on my wall. And then I'm going to click on my elevate button. And here's my wall in elevation. I need to up down this window. I'm going to click on it and then grab the little handle here. Click on that handle. Now I can move it up and down. I want it to be 12 inches from the ceiling. So I'm simply going to backspace, type in 12 on my keyboard, enter, and that pops it right up into place. Now if we want to elevate the rest of our walls, we can click on the wall, the elevation button, and here's our other wall. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so I can see what I'm working on. I'm going to right click, choose the wall, I'm going to come up here and click on my elevation button. And there's the inside elevation. There's this elevation. Now I want my other elevation, so I'm going to scroll up, right click, choose the wall, construction line 9, outside elevation. And there's my outside elevation. Now if I come up here and right click on my tab, I can, you see I've got delete tab and edit view number four. So I'm going to change the name of it here and I am going to make this Island Outside. And edit Island Inside. And edit Pantry wall and edit sink wall. Now all of my elevations are nice and labeled so we can find which one we're working on. And another thing while we're here, just real quick is you can actually lay out cabinets right in your elevation if that's easier for you. You can come up here and pop them right in. Drag them around. It's not quite as easy. I don't think. Some people find it pretty easy to do this. But that makes it makes it pretty easy when you need to adjust things and move things around. Now some other things you can do, of course you can zoom in and zoom out in your elevations. Just click in the elevate window and you can zoom in and zoom out. I've got my mouse navigation turned on so you can tell that I've got three inches on my window there and we're 61 and a half from my countertop to my ceiling. Scroll out a little bit 72 inch by 39 inch opening there. You can also right click on something and you can drag it, you can move it, you can up down it, you can center it you can position it, you can fit it, you can snap it, you can stack it, you can change the nomenclature on it, you can copy it, replace it, delete it, you can add it to a group, you can change its color, and you can go right to the attributes of the cabinet. So there's lots of editing options you can do in Elevation.
and we'll just click zoom to fit so that's back to size and we'll close our elevation now you remember when we built these elevations we highlighted the wall click the elevation button well let's do that again oh now we have it twice so we've got the sink wall and then we've got layout wall one so once you build your elevations they update automatically you don't ever have to go back in and adjust those okay now we have a few more things to finish up here I've got some sinks and faucets and cooktops and appliances to put in so let's start here and I'm going to go to the attributes we've done some really fun things with our sink cabinets by allowing sinks and faucets to be replaced right from modifications now you notice I've got a plumbing drop menu here and I've got the Kohler catalog as well Pro Kitchen comes standard with just the default plumbing catalog, but I've downloaded the Kohler catalog and I can access it here. I can also access it over here in my standard catalogs. You see I've got Kohler over here. And I can also access it from our plumbing icon here. But we'll go back here to our attributes, sinks and faucets, choose Kohler, and now I'm going to choose my kitchen fixtures and a sink and an undermount sink you'll notice as we go through here each item is shown as we roll our mouse over it makes it really easy to go in and select the sink that you want I think we'll take this one and then when you click on it it tells us our sink base size tells us our sink size so we know that that sink will actually fit in the sink base if we're happy and we like it, we click Add, and it shows up right here. And now I'm going to close my sink menu and open my faucet menu. And again, as you roll your mouse through it, it highlights the faucet. Makes it really easy to find the one you want. And it's off the screen. I'll click Add. And there we have it. Zoom out a little bit. And there's our faucet with sprayer and our sink and we'll choose OK and that guy's set. I'm going to come over to my oven cabinet now. I'm going to go to the oven cabinet attributes and you'll notice this one has appliances in it. We're going to add an appliance and here you can choose from appliances. If I had um, any other appliance catalogs installed they would show up here as well but I don't so we're just going to stay in our default appliances going to go to cooking and wall ovens and electric wall ovens and single oven single stainless steel 30 inch oven is just right and I'm going to hit place and you'll see it pops it right in here now sometimes you have to modify this a little bit I need to pull it in out a little uh, it's just a little much not quite enough somewhere right between those two 25 percent there we go so now it's in out you can zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better but you'll also notice that it seems to be a little bit high now I can change my dimensions here and make it fit sometimes on double ovens you have to do that just to make them fit even though you know they'll fit in the cabinet the manufacturer specs say that it'll fit they just sometimes don't when you come over here so sometimes you have to manipulate the size of the appliance itself but in this case, to simply do an up-down, I'm just going to change the height here. Whoops, got a little carried away. And there you go. I've moved it down enough that my doors are not conflicting. And we should be ready to go. So I am going to simply hit OK because I am happy with what I've done. And let's see, I've got a few other appliances. We don't have the, the uh, tall cabinet set up, the, oven, uh, the uh, refrigerator cabinet set up. So when I go into it, there's no appliance button up here. So I have to place this guy manually, which is okay. It's almost as easy. I go to refrigeration and I'll do a bottom freezer. Take that guy right there, place, and I'm just going to drop him in out here. Collision detected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come back and catch that in a minute since they opened right back up. I'm going to go to my cooktops gas cooktop on a 36 inch stainless steel 
Take a look at a couple of my options. Down drafter, no. Let's go back to this. Nope. This one, this one is what I want and place. I'm going to drop it into that base cabinet because it does not have the setup for appliances yet either. That is a feature we are working on though. I'm going to go to ventilation and chimney hoods and we can scroll through here and take a look at our chimney hoods. Stainless. Whoops, I want island chimney hoods. There we go. Stainless and stainless. And so we've got a few different options in here. And I think I'm going to use this option right here and place. And I'm going to drop it right there as well. And now we are all done with these. Now when I place these, I just dropped them. I didn't worry about getting them in the cabinet or, well, really even close to the cabinet. So I'm going to come back and I am going to select it. And I'm going to go to center. And then I'm going to click on the cabinet itself. And it will pop it right into center of that cabinet. And center. And that makes it really easy. Now this guy, he got thrown off there. So I'm going to have to move him manually because if you remember, said there's a collision detection. Center doesn't always work on a collision detection. So I'm going to choose that refrigerator and hit center and click on the cabinet and it pops it right into center for us. Now, I'm going to go out and click on my elevation button again. And you'll see it added, our appliances. Looks like I need a little up down on that guy and a little adjustment. And my sink wall, you see I've got my appliances in here and my plumbing in there. So let's go back to our inside island. And I want to right click on this guy. And it's going to tell me if I zoom in close enough that we're 18 inches above the cooktop. Or if we come over here 54 inches above the floor, well, that's a little bit low. Need that guy right up there next to the ceiling. So I'm just going to grab him and move him up. And again, you can try to get it just right, or you can just backspace through everything. Hit zero and enter, and it's right there. Now you'll see it's telling me that it's 66 inches above the floor. And depending on where you live, you might need to adjust that a little bit to meet code. And you do that just by adding the extension kit. And to do that, you just right click on it, go to attributes and change the size. We're going to close that out again. And so we've got all of our appliances set. We have all of our plumbing fixtures set. We have a little filler down here that we need to stick in. So we're going to get down here and kind of zoom in tend to zoom in manually because I forget I've got this little zoom to region button up here and I want to go to accessories and fillers and tall fillers and tall universal fillers and we have an auto size in here, auto resize. So if I grab a 391, it's going to make it in automatically inch and a half 90 to fit there. Um, but we have an inch and a half 91 option. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to drag it out here. And you got to get fairly close to the corner and let it go. And it pops it right in place. And now I can come back and do my zoom to fit. And we can check everything out. Now I'm ready for countertops and moldings and all that good stuff. So if you remember when we were back here in design settings and moldings tab, we set up all of our moldings. So I'm going to click OK here. And I'm going to come down here and find my molding button. And there it is. And I'm simply going to click my molding button. And it's going to put all my moldings on for me. We zoom in, you see we've got the crown out here. You see our toe kick line coming through here. You notice our toe kick does not go across the dishwasher. So we've got nice toe kick in there and crown molding and under cabinet molding and all sorts of great stuff. So that makes it really easy. Now you can also set moldings by simply coming into your moldings, which are not in accessories, but rather in moldings, and top moldings. And you can just come in here and you can grab them. 
I'll just delete this guy right here. Delete, highlight, which is just left click, delete on your keyboard, or you can do it the hard way and you can right click and delete. Now, we had CM, CCM96, I believe. So we're going to grab it. Is that what we had? Let's find out. Right click, CCM120. All right. So let's just grab a 96 here. It'll be close enough. I'm just going to drop it right on that cabinet and it's going to pop it right out there. We'll do it again on this one and it pops out there because it only does it on the cabinets that are connected at that height. It doesn't do the drop. So it's one stick per height. Now, if we want to stack our moldings, we just simply grab another molding, whatever flavor you want. Drag it out there and drop it on the cabinet. Doesn't have to be on the other molding, doesn't have to be precise, just on the cabinet. Now, if we pop into 3D, we roll around there. We can see our huge stack of molding on that. Okay, now moldings are done. We have countertops remaining. I want to delete that one extra molding there. Highlight, delete on the keyboard, and it's gone. Now for our countertops. We can place countertops two different ways. We can come down here and we can place countertops manually, or we can go to our countertop designer. Placing countertops manually, we click on it, and our tops pop right in. And you see the extra line here for our countertop all the way around. And backsplash should be the same way. We just click the backsplash button and the backsplash sets for us. Now let's take a look at how to do it in Countertop Designer. So you notice there's a little arrow button down here. I'm going to click and hold on that. It gives me the option to remove all countertops, add one countertop, or remove one countertop. I'm going to remove them all. Now we're going to click on our Countertop Designer. And here we're going to click Auto Generate, and that's going to build all the shapes of our tops. It's going to pull them over for us and pop them right in here. Now we're going to come down to our corners. We can set our corners. We can do a radius. We can do a clip. We can do whatever we want. We're going to do a little radius on some of these corners. We set the radius size right here. We want an inch and a half radius. So I'm just going to click on, you see it highlights it red there, and red, and red in each corner. And I've got a nice little radius. Might as well put a radius on these guys too, since that one sticks out. Um, this one doesn't need a radius. That one doesn't need a radius. This one could use a radius. There we go. We've got little radiuses in all of those corners. And come over to segments. Now we can have fun over here in the segments as well. You can do bump ins and bump outs. And we'll just grab arc over here. We'll stick it on there. See, it gave me a nice little arc. We can adjust the size of it, the depth of it. We can center it. We can right it. We can left it. We can offset it. So lots of things we can do there for that little bump if you wanted to add that little bump. I don't. So delete on your keyboard when it's highlighted. We'll eliminate that for you. Cutouts, you can put out cutouts in there. These are only necessary if you need to spec them for your countertop. You don't need to do it for the layout. Um, edge profiles, we can change the edge profiles. Let's grab a half bull nose. We're just going to put it on the fronts here. I also want it on the corners. Getting the corners is, can be a little tricky. So there we got it on all the corners. Oops, I need this end too. And that corner. There we go. Material. This is kind of a fun one. Enter material name. I'm lazy. I name it one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to 
select or you can import if you take an image you can import one it pulls up our standard countertop colors and we had chosen originally this guy so we'll grab it back and so now we can simply hit apply and it applies it up here so name number one we know we're selecting number one we're just going to, we have crosshairs on our mouse, so we know something's attached to it. We just come out here and click and click and click, and all of our countertops are the same color. We could have done multiple colors if we'd have wanted to. CNC radius, if you're actually building this and sending it to your CNC guy with all of the specs on it, you can set this up. European miter, if you need to add that. Add backsplash, yeah, you need some of those. Backsplash, side splash, side splash, backsplash, side splash, no splash, backsplash, side splash. Sink, you can add your sinks here, but we already put the sink in the cabinet, so there's no reason to do it over here. Again, unless you're using it for sending it to your countertop fabricator. Add appliance, same thing, we already have it over there. Bill of materials. You can come in here and you can set a price for each and every one of these units. Say $10 per radius corner. You set then you can set your your foot square foot prices over here as you get down each unit, each cutout, each edge profile. You can set all this up in advance and save it by default and it'll automatically calculate it for you here. The report, this is a report you can print off. It's got all the information in it, edge profile information, all the sizing, and you can send this right to your countertop fabricator for a quote. And your summary, place all, this is the important thing you want to do when you come to your summary. You want to place all and this actually places it over on your layout. And once we're done with the summary, we can close that window. And here our countertop is out here. It's all set up nice and neat for us. And we are almost there. We are so very close to being done. So now let's take a look at our 3D. And here's our 3D. We can rotate around, see what it looks like. We can zoom in. And I'm just using my mouse controls. If you hold down your right mouse button and move your mouse, it moves the design. If you hold down your left mouse button and move your mouse, it also moves the design. You can use your navigation controls up here if you want to. Not quite as easy, in my opinion, as using your mouse controls. Zoom in, zoom out, save. That's an important one that you cannot use from your mouse. Save button. So once you get to view the way you want it, you can save it. And then you've got your print button. We can come in here with this is our doors button. I can change the door style. This is nice when your customer is sitting right there with you. You can click on it, change the door style, change all the functions of it, all five piece headers instead of just the lowers. You change the finish. And you see it changes in the background there, you slide it off. So lots of functions and features, but what you want to be wary of if you change anything over here in any of these tabs, when you close out, it does not save. So if you're sitting there with a customer and you make changes over here and you get them nailed down to exactly what you want, be sure to write those down so you can come back over and go to global specifications and change them over there because they will not change over there. Let's just demonstrate that. Close, global specs, Here's our old Cambridge paint grade, light grayish door style, the way we had it set earlier. And if I build a 3D, 
There it is, back in our original colors. So we have a fun feature up here. It's called Hide Invisible Walls. I'm going to rotate without it turned on. You'll notice as I rotate around, I see the back of the cabinets, which is kind of cool, but kind of weird. If I hide in my invisible walls, then as I turn around, the cabinets disappear, and I get a better view. So great view of the island right there. So that's your hide invisible walls. You've got open and closed doors and drawers. So it looks like a tornado just came through. You can adjust your lighting. Sometimes lighting can be pretty tricky in these, um, especially when you have a lot of sunlight coming in and a lot of room lights. If you're adding pendants and stuff like that, sometimes it just washes things out so badly that you can't see anything. I'm going to slide this off the side a little bit. So you can adjust the, uh, the lighting as far as the intensity goes. This is dispersed light, so this is how it shines out from the, the light fixture. You can turn down the light intensity itself, the wattage, the sunlight. Sometimes you have to do these for 3D, but I like to turn them back up to the 150 when we do high def, because uh, the high defs tend to be a little bit dark if you don't. And so you can set those the way you want them. And now it's a, it's a little bit better feature, a little bit not quite so washed out. And now we've got high def, light and shadow window renderer. So we'll take a quick high def. And this is something you'll probably use a lot for your customers. Builds a beautiful high definition image. Even though a little tiny image here is not very high definition. The big image is. So you can, turn, you can adjust the glossiness of your countertops. I'm going to adjust it up a little bit more. Your flooring, you can put a little glossiness to your flooring. Your ceiling, walls, windows, appliances all have a little glossy to them. I'm going to turn that down to about there. You can adjust your re screen resolution and you can adjust your light scene to be a little brighter or a little bit darker. I like to go a little bit brighter on these, but not too much. And then you can select the size that you need. We're going to stay small for this because I only have a small recording screen. You can add additional highlight for dark finishes, which we'll do on this one, even though it's a semi-dark finish. And you can do maximum image quality, which takes a little bit longer to render, but it's still quite fast. And we're going to hit render. Here's our beautiful high def. Could have probably come in and centered it up a little bit better. There's nothing you can do once you're in it, but you can see the light shining through the windows. You can see the reflection of the light from the windows on the countertops, on the flooring. So that's kind of cool. But it's a beautiful high def rendering to give your customer. And now we've got our 360 panorama. Now we can adjust the camera angles and everything here. I tend to just leave it the way the factory settings are. Usually gives me a pretty good shot to get going with. Hope your noise isn't getting picked up on this. Do you see that man in the room? You're making a lot of noise. Yeah. You want to take that outside and do it? Go in the living room and do it? You're making an awful lot of noise.
And there's a beautiful panorama. Of course, you've got some controls down here. You can move right, left, look up, look down. Again, just hold down your right mouse button and you can adjust it around. You can zoom in, zoom out, and restart it. Pretty fancy. You can save this and actually send the link for this off to your customer. And the customer can open it right from their window, their browser and view it online. Pretty cool feature to have. And we also have a top view and a front view. You click on that, it pulls in your top view. And it pulls in the front view of your specific walls. You can zoom into these to get them a little bit better. So if you have a real hard time navigating the rotational features, you can use your views. You can also save a view. Once you have it the way you like it, you can save it, and then you can open it back up the next time around, which makes it kind of handy when you're revising something for a customer and they're looking at one specific image saying, I need this changed. Well, you can save that image, make the changes, come back, create that exact image again for them with the changes shown. So that's pretty much everything we can do in 3D. Now we're ready to create some reports. So our first report here we'll do is the customer report. And when you open the customer report, you can come in here, it saves your last settings, so you can see what I was doing last. You can come in here and you can set your sales tax, your design charge, your shipping. Um, these can be percentages, dollars, whether they're taxed or not, per pound, per cubic foot, installation, discount or multiplier. There's a little button on these. There's, there's a lot of confusion in the industry as to what a discount is versus what a multiplier is. They tend to be used interchangeably but we've defined them here so that you can use them the way they're defined. Um, you can come in here and you can add your logo. You can add a page header and a page footer if necessary. You can check out your pricing. Now if you want to add installation as a one fee for the entire job versus per box installation, you can enter that over here. If you enter installation over here, on your installation, this is per box. So it'll count your boxes, multiply by how many boxes and give you a price. Um, this installation will give you this one price for the entire job. You can turn off pricing if you don't want to show the pricing to your customer. And you can do your project settings. Now remember, we just started setting up the uh, customer settings when we very first started. We put in the dealer name, and the customer name. We didn't fill out all the rest of the information. That would all be here if we did. I'm going to view the report. And here's our report. Here's all the customer and dealer information that we entered. Here is all the global specifications that we entered. And here is the pricing for all of the items. And the rest of the pricing and then our combination pricing, our price computation. So it breaks it all the way down here. Had we entered a discount or multiplier, it would have showed up down here and our catalog total. So this is the report you would give to the customer. And then the final total of the page and then our manufacturer report. Here we can put in our purchase order number if necessary, our order number, any information we need to enter here. We can change our dealer multiplier. We can tell it how to ship it by truck, whether it needs to be per pound or per cubic foot or none of the above and OK. And this one you'll notice is on the manufacturer's header. It's their actual order form we've recreated here goes through all the global specifications on the first page. Second page, again, this is all the manufacturer's order form. So if you're a Showplace dealer, this looks familiar to you. 
all the pricing, more pricing, total price report. And so this is what you would print off and fax or email to the manufacturer for your order. Now there's some more report options up here. There's multi-quote report. We'll look at that guy real quick. If you have a customer that comes in and they can't figure out what door style or what finish or whatever to put in, you can come in here and you can select different door styles. We've got five quotes available. We're going to cut that down to two. Um, set your sales tax and all that information just like we had on the other one. We can include the logo path, our project settings, our quote report. Here is quote report number two, and they're identical at this point because we haven't changed them. But now we can come in and say they're looking at maybe the Covington door style two, um, large drawers in hickory, autumn, ebony glaze, no distressing, satin finish, one inch top, no bottom, one inch top on the talls, a touch up kit, of course and the natural wood interior, yes. And so we can view this report now. And so here's our multi-quote report. We've got quote one, quote two, breaks it down all the way through. Quote one, quote two, that's all of our global specifications. Quote one, quote two, we can see the price differences here. And we get down to the end and there's a significant price difference at the end. So that's very handy when you have customers that can't make up their mind. So when you're ready to present this to your customer, you can come over here, click on print preview. And I have mine set to selected views and browse. And this will allow you to come in here and choose the views you want. You can give you view one, two, three, four, five off the bottom. And we didn't adjust any of those. so. We can just view, view view one and all of our elevation settings and OK. We can come in here to set up and you might need to do that. And adjust your margins. Want 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So we've got all of our margins set and OK. And you can come in here and view your stamp form. This is our little logo. You can replace the logo with your logo. You can change the text on the stamp form. This prints out on the bottom of, of the page we're about to look at. You can set the text the way you want it. And here is our design or layout. We did view one, so this is view one. We can change our ratio if you want to. So that little ratio helps. We'll go to the mover, maybe adjust it around a little bit. Get her set the way we want it. And as we scroll through here, we'll see our elevations are up. And our elevation, and our elevation, and our elevation. So this makes it really easy to compile everything in one quick report and print it all off, ready to give to the customer. And that about takes us through everything. So this has been Pro Kitchen Video Tutorials, designed in an hour and a half. Thank you for watching.